Howdy, my name is Casey Davis, and first I just want to thank y'all for following me on social media and tuning in to my educational videos. Increasing my virtual presence, if you will, during this time of social distancing has definitely been a learning curve for me. I consider myself an educator as well as a lifelong learner, and therefore it excites me to get to share my love for knowledge and education and knowledge of these various subjects with you. If you have any questions, comments, or even future topic ideas, please reach out to me at my email address listed or on social media. Um, most social media platforms is at Life of an Ag Agent. So today we are going to discuss cool season vegetation, weeds, wildflowers, etc., whatever you'd like to call them. Um, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few terms with you. So cool season versus warm season. A cool season crop is something that if desirable would be planted in the fall depending on what geographic location you're in. So between somewhere between August to November. If it is a nuisance crop, a pre-emergent control would be best applied in the fall. So between like October and November. And a post-emergent control, of course, would be after it emerges, but before it blooms or sets seed, which would be typically January through March. A warm season crop is something that, if it's desirable, would be planted in probably January through March. We're getting a little late if you're going to do it now, but could still, still plant it now. So if it's a nuisance, a pre-emergent control would best be applied right now, um, usually February through April, depending on the specific plant and, of course, your geographic location. A uh, post-emergent control would be after it emerges, of course, but before it blooms or sets seed. So a perennial versus annual versus biennial. A perennial is something that comes back every year, goes dormant in the winter or summer, whatever its dormant season is. An annual is something that must be reseeded every year, so it's going to need to be replaced every year. But you do have plants, mostly the nuisance ones, that reseed themselves and come back year after year. So many of the weeds we discussed today are of that type. A biennial is going to be something that sticks around for two years and survives through two growing seasons. Broadleaf versus grassy. Well, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if it's not grassy, it will likely have leaves, hence the term broadleaf. And so, the, you know, that's just leaf is broad. It's not a grass blade. Now, there are a couple other types in there, but for the most part today, it's going to be either broadleaf or grassy. All right, whenever I am giving a talk about pesticide use, I always like to include a disclaimer. Please always consult your local county extension agent before following a recommendation that you might find online. Restrictions are different for different states, and what is legal or recommended in Texas may not be acceptable in other states. Or it may be restricted use requiring a license to purchase in one state, but not another. So, always read the pesticide label and follow directions. Even if your local county extension agent has given you instruction, labels may change slightly from year to year. This can include mixing ratios or personal protective equipment recommendations, um, also known as PPE. So just always be sure that you are familiar with the label. Um, always be familiar with what PPE is recommended and make sure to have that equipment on hand, whether it might be a special type of glove, mask, or respirator, anything like that. It's for your safety. All right, lastly, uh, different turf grasses may be more sensitive to certain pesticides. So this is another reason to make sure and read the label. Make sure the product that you are planning to use is safe for use on your desired lawn type. All right, let's get started now. The reason behind showing video of vegetation in the field is to help you have a perspective of what it may look like in your own pasture or lawn. Most weed ID presentations show a high quality image of what the perfect example of a plant species looks like. In reality, it's often difficult to distinguish between plants that may look very similar in bloom, seed pod, or leaf structure. Granted, there's a few selective herbicides that will control many different weeds at once. But correct identification of a nuisance species or weed is still key when determining which pesticide to apply. In this segment, we're going to discuss annual bluegrass, chickweed, 
of which there are many varieties, spurweed, also known as lawn burweed, purple dead nettle, henbit, Carolina geranium, and dichondra. Annual bluegrass. This is a cool season or winter annual grass that is spread by seed. It is native to Europe. It has a smooth leaf blade with a curved boat shaped tip. It has a clumping growth habit. It is common in turf grass, ornamental plantings, and gardens. It prefers moist or compacted soil, and herbicide resistance can be an issue with this specific plant. So, control options. A pre-emergent control in late summer or early fall, and a second application is usually recommended after that. There are many different options for chemical ingredients for this one. Uh, Post-emergent control would be in about January to February, still before many seeds have set. And again, there's many options for post-emergent control. Um, atrazine is a common uh, pesticide that's used. It's also recommended to do a spot treatment with a non-selective herbicide like glyphosate or diquat. Mechanical removal or hand pulling is best for newly established lawns or vegetable gardens and for minimizing chemical use to avoid building up a resistance. Chickweed. This is a cool season annual. It has prostrate to trailing stems, smooth leaves that are oval to elliptic in shape and have opposite arrangement. Flowers are white and occur in small clusters and it's also shallow rooted. It is common in lawns that are mowed too closely to the ground, which is common of many weeds. Um, also note, it is important to raise your mower height, especially that last mow going into the fall and winter. That way it leaves more grass cover to help minimize these pesky weeds. Chickweed also thrives in gardens with little or no mulching. So about three inches of mulch is recommended in most cases. There are multiple species of chickweed known as common, field, mouse ear, or sticky. Some of these have hairy stems and some have smooth. It produces many seeds. Each plant can produce over 800 seeds and lay dormant in the soil for up to 10 years. Control. Mechanical or hand pulling a young infestation is always a good idea. Uh, chemical control, a pre-emergent does work, but post-emergent control is probably also likely and necessary. Post-emergent control, a selective broadleaf weed control with one of the following active ingredients, either 2,4-D, MCPP, dicamba, or triclopyr. They also make three-way mixes that you can buy in the store of three of those products. All right, spur weed. This is everyone's favorite thing to hate. Um, it's also known as lawn burr weed. It is a cool season annual. It germinates in the fall. It's a ground hugging plant with parsley like leaves in small clusters. It has tiny white flowers that bloom in late winter to early spring. And then it sets the seed, which is that problematic sticker that sticks to and pokes your feet, your shoes, your dogs, your dog's fur. It's that annoying one. So control options. This invasive in particular is best to treat with a pre-emergent control in the fall. Applying a herbicide after the seeds have set, which are those stickers, is pointless because that sticker, it's obviously still emerging. So a good pre-emergent control is gonna be something with cymazine in it. A post-emergent control can still be effective, but you've got to catch it before those seeds set. So a good rule of thumb is to treat it before it blooms. Uh, December to February is usually about that time frame. You wanna treat with a broadleaf herbicide containing 2,4-D. Often a three-way mix of that MCPP, 2,4-D, and dicamba is recommended. And again, you don't have to mix that yourself. There are products that contain all three of those in one bottle. So what can be done right now in April for this nuisance? Chemical control, physical removal, probably not an option. What you wanna do is maintain a thick, dense, healthy lawn. So fertilize your grass or forage and get it high enough and then maintain a higher mower blade each time you mow. This will at least buffer the stickers when stepped on. Purple dead nettle. This is a cool season annual broadleaf weed. It has square stems and it's low growing. It has juvenile triangular ovate leaves. To me, they're almost heart-like. With toothed margins, it can have purple-tinged color to the young leaves. Small pinkish to reddish to purple flowers in dense whorls. 
and it thrives in nutrient-rich and mildly humic or sandy loam soils. It is often found intermixed with henbit and sometimes chickweed. Control for purple dead nettle. Um, it's typically going to die out in late May anyways. Um, it is readily controlled by tillage, which would be a mechanical option. A post-emergent chemical uh, would be a broadleaf weed control if the stand is truly invasive, um, something with 2,4-D in it. Henbit. This is a cool season annual broadleaf weed. It is actually a member of the mint family. It has multiple stems from one single taproot and also hollow stems. Soft, slightly hairy leaves. The leaves in general are more rounded, whereas in purple dead nettle, the leaves often resemble that heart shape. Hembit has small flowers that are purple in color. It is a native to Eurasia. And it's not necessarily considered a pasture weed, but it can be invasive in the lawn or home garden. A pre-emergent control option um, that is best for lawns is a product containing prodiamine, diphthafir, or isoxaban. These pre-emergents would also be what we recommend for purple dead nettle and chickweed. A post-emergent control is going to be a three-way mix containing at least 2,4-D, so that same one I mentioned earlier. Mechanical control is probably easiest in the lawn or home garden so as not to disturb any desirable plants that may be more sensitive to uh, the herbicide that you would use. Carolina geranium. This is a cool season annual or biennial. It's also called Cranesbill. This is native to the USA. It has smooth leaves that are deeply five to seven lobed and each lobe is bluntly toothed. It has a unique design for the leaves. The flower is white to lavender and in blooms April to May. The fruits have a conspicuous beak about a half inch long, hence the term Cranesbill as another common name. It's a taproot system. It has a basal rosette of leaves. The stems are erect and the stems actually have a pink to red color on some of them. It's a common problem in turf grasses, compacted areas, or rocky gravelly areas. Control for this would be a pre- or post-emergent control using atrazine. Post-emergent control would be, again, that three-way product containing 2,4-D, possibly dicamba. Now remember, these recommendations are based on extension publications valid here in the year 2020 and in Texas. Please always reach out to your local county extension agent to confirm if a specific product is available and recommended for use in your area for your situation. And always, 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 please read the label of the pesticide you're using to make sure it is appropriate, again, for your situation, your desired turf or forage, and for the um, other plants in the area. All right, dichondra. This is a perennial broadleaf plant. It is mat forming, ground hugging, and creeping with sparsely juvenile smooth leaves that are somewhat kidney shaped, but to me look more rounded and curved. It has alternate leaves and a yellow flower that blooms later in spring. It is semi evergreen. It will recover or regrow from the dormant fibrous root system, hence perennial. It is not native to the area, but is well adapted to North Texas. It thrives in thin turf, golf fairways, and home lawns. It grows best in full sun to partial shade and is actually considered a desirable ground cover in some situations. However, it is susceptible to root rot. Control options, because this can be invasive, a post-emergent broadleaf weed control option such as 2,4-D is effective. This concludes segment one. All data and recommendations are based on Texas A&M, AgriLife Extension, and other extension resources. Product and company names and recommendations are not endorsements of products and companies. Photos here are courtesy of Casey Davis, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, Michigan Extension, University of Arkansas Extension, wildflower.org, and the Texas A&M system. The members of Texas A&M AgriLife will provide equal opportunities in all programming and employment. Thank you.